You're listening to Empress Conversations Podcast with your host, Maggie Peary. Conversations with Maggie. Hey, yeah. Empress. Join us next time on the next episode of Empress Conversations with Maggie. To learn more about guests or for more information on working with Maggie, go to www.empressconversationswithmaggie slash get hyphen started. Hello and welcome to another episode of Empress Conversations with Maggie. Today, my guest is Robin Amos, and she is the owner of the Revest Team Atlanta Realtors. Whether you're looking to buy or sell a property or a seasoned investor, Robin is here to guide you through that process. She is a native of Metro Atlanta. She has always had a passion for real estate and helping clients achieve the goal of selling, buying, or investing in real estate. She has been licensed and involved in real estate since 2008 and prides herself in having the highest level of integrity and commitment in every real estate transaction. Robin, welcome. Hey, Maggie. How are you? Great. Thank you. It's a beautiful day in Atlanta. It is a beautiful day. It is a beautiful day. Uh, I went out earlier, worked out, and I was like, man, I need to work out outside. No, that's great. It is wonderful. So Robin, do tell our listening audience about who you are, how you got started, and how we connected, whatever you'd like to share with us. Awesome. Awesome. Yes. Well, first off, thank you for having me on your show. Um, I'm very much appreciative and grateful for the opportunity. Um, But my name is Robin. Robin Alicia is what I go by. My full name is Robin Alicia Amos. And um, I actually, um, I'm from Atlanta. I've been here just about the majority of my life. Um, I grew up in Metro Atlanta, attended Redan High School, uh, went to Georgia State University. Um, yes, yeah, so I've just always been in the city uh, my whole life. Um, I'm a mom. I have a beautiful seven-year-old daughter, soon to be eight, uh, my daughter Avery, and uh, I love her dearly. And uh, I co-parent well with her dad. I don't like saying I'm a single mom because her dad is very much involved and um, I like to give him his kudos. And um, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a full-time realtor and also a real estate investor. I actually just uh, did my first partnership on the flip. So I'm excited about that. And um, I just eat, sleep, and drink business and real estate. Like it, it, Those are two of my favorite things to discuss and talk about. Robin, that is fantastic. So do tell us the story or what was the moment where you had that aha and realized, you know what, corporate America is not for me. I can't do this every day, clocking in, clocking out the same thing. What was it? Because I think it really takes a special type of person to go out on their own and, you know, you don't work, you don't eat. So tell us a little bit about your journey. How, what made you decide real estate? All right. So um, back in 2008, this was probably right before the crash. Um, I remember telling my mom, you know, hey, I've always had jobs that were sales related. So always being in sales jobs. So uh, sales wasn't um, wasn't foreign to me. And um, I wanted to do something that I could essentially, you know, just make more money. Um, so at the time, I actually was working for AT&T. And um I got my license and I had started doing some things and then, you know, the market crashed. Uh, The market crashed my first year in business as an agent. Um, It was definitely a challenge. So, uh, you know, for that first time around, I actually, the market crashed shortly after I had quit AT&T. I decided that, hey, this is corporate America. It's not for me. I'm going to do real estate full time. That was my first stint at it. And um, the market crashed. It was very difficult. Um, I ended up getting another job like a part-time job. And um, then I end up um, actually uh, uh, working with um, for a local gym and that kind of grew into a budding um, business. And I became the manager of that gym and learned a lot. And I ended up staying at that gym uh, for about 10, 11 years, actually managing the gym. And um, I learned a lot about business in that time. Um, I, like I said, I was always a serial entrepreneur, but helping, um, it was Todd House Fitness and Syndicator and helping the owner run that gym allowed me to learn a lot. So I learned a lot during that process. And um, 
during that time, I had stopped doing real estate because of the market. But I found my way back to real estate in 2019, reactivated my license in 2020, and things have taken off since then. Now, that's a great segue because all along you were consistent, you were staying true. 2020, you reactivated your license, and just like in 2008, along comes COVID. How did you survive that? I mean, that was a time where every the world had not experienced that. So how did you survive still making sales and closing homes with COVID? Because that was a shock to everybody's system. Yes, yes. So I got my license reinstated um, in December of 2020. So we were, I guess, at that time, maybe about six or seven months within COVID. Um it was difficult. Like a lot of the protocols were different. Like it's the way that you show houses. Uh, when we had to go in houses, you had to put on uh, shoe covers and masks. And uh, every home that you sh went to show had like a little sanit sanitation um, uh, thing at the at the front. But surprisingly, COVID was great for real estate. Um, it, it became um, like sellers really gained so much equity during COVID because as a result of COVID, the normal buying and selling the homes uh, slowed down. So the, the, so two things happened during COVID for real estate. Mm. Not as many people were selling their homes, but interest rates were crazy low because they wanted to stabilize the economy. So anytime you get really low interest rates, you means you have a ton of people who want to buy houses. Mm -hmm. So you have all these people who are not sure to sell their house because it's COVID, but you got all these people like, it's the right time to buy a house because I can get 2% on $500,000. So um, it just, it made the market a frenzy. But as far as what what we did to sustain ourselves during that market is you just had to be careful. Like, I mean, you, you couldn't shake hands like you normally would. You couldn't hug your clients like you normally would. You had to have a mask. Um, I mean, I, I remember um, I had an elderly client and I literally just I opened the door and because she was just so fish, she needed to look. But I opened the door. I didn't I didn't I didn't escort her through the house. Um, I allowed her to go look and we talked outside because, you know, we always felt like it's safer to talk outside. So we had our mask on and we communicated outside. So things like that um, you definitely had to put in place um, during COVID. Now that's thank you for sharing that because I had no no idea that was going on. So one of the things that I absolutely love about you, Robin, is that on social you once posted something you had done on Future Me. Do tell the story because I absolutely love it. I loved it. Oh yes, um, yeah, that's an amazing post. Um, so uh, uh, as I stated, I had been managing a gym for about or working at a gym manager for about eleven years, and um, probably about the last six months of that eleven years, I kind of knew it was my time to transition into something else. Um, but I love this place. I helped it grow. I implemented so many things. Uh, you know, Mag, I even met you there through Pam. You know. So, so, so many, such a big part of my life, uh, was the gym. So it was just a, it was a very difficult decision for me. I was trying to figure out how I can do both. And it was just difficult. It was a difficult transitional period in my life. And, um, uh, probably around March or April, I kind of decided that, you know, I'm going to take this step out on faith and go out on my own. I had a real estate coach and, um, we were talking about things to grow my business and I came across this site and it, um, said, write a letter to yourself, write a letter to yourself a year from now, through one year from now, three years from now, five years from now, once you write that letter, it's like an email. Once you write that letter in that app, you never see it until the date that it's time to open it. So obviously I'm going on about my life, you know, doing the things that I'm doing that I want to do, feel like I'm manifesting. And I get an email and it's the letter that I wrote to myself a year ago. And I still kind of get emotional when I talk about it, because when I tell you just about every single thing that I put in that letter happened to me, I left the gym. I started my own business. I hit six, six figures in my business. I fell in love. Um, I moved to the city. I got a new car, like every single thing that I, that I put in that letter manifested. And it just speaks to the power of you writing something down 
and just working on being 1% better every day. And if you focus on those goals and you focus on the activities around those goals, you'll be amazed at your progress. Because in the thick of it, it's like, oh, maybe I'm hitting them. I mean, I know I was doing better, obviously. I was, I was, I was, knew I was going in the right track. But to see it written down from a year ago and it had not happened, to fast forward into a year and those things had happened was just an amazing feeling. And it, it just gave me, it, it inspired me to one, share my story so people can be inspired, but two, to just keep going harder. I loved it. It really inspired me. I was as bold as writing things five years from now and just to see if, you know, what will happen if, when that manifests. So I love that story. Robin, you know, one thing that you said, you mentioned earlier how we met at the gym as well, um, the relationships that you've built in those 11 years. And that was probably a key factor in, you know, now your business is so successful, six figures plus, but those relationships, you're just one of those people that's so magnetic anyway. And when somebody meets you, they're just like, oh, I remember. I know where she is. I don't know where I met her from. But there is something. Talk to us about how you are. It, it came naturally, how you make those connections. And because that's all real estate seems to be. It's who you know, getting yourself out there. And like you said, you're gifted in sales. Yeah. So, um, I mean, relationships is, uh, I call it my superpower. I um, love it. Being a relational person. Um, I get that superpower from my mom. My mom. Um, all my life uh, just was a lot of counsel for people. I remember growing up and she was on a prayer counselor at church and people calling her, you know, people always just uh, were, were drawn to my mom. Just my mom's is magnetic. People love my mom. And I think um, I definitely know that I get that um, level of connection from her. Um, and she always taught me to value people. She always taught me to value how you treat people, how you talk to people. and um, what value you can give to people? How can you add to their lives? And that's just kind of how I run my life. Um, I've been blessed. Um, most of my deals um, and real estate, I do marketing. I spend money on leads and all those things. The majority of my deals have come from from just my relationship, my sphere of influence. And, um, you know, I, 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 I'm, I like to call myself the connected realtor because a lot of stuff, um, I just look back on, you know, I think over the past and I'm like, if somebody needs something, they'll call me. I don't always have it for them, but I can nine out of 10 times. I know somebody who does. So there have been deals. I mean, just to give me an example. I had a deal where the couple needed to get married mm. as a result of their loan. And it's, you know, not to go into all the details of it, but that, that was the thing. And I was like, it was like a Tuesday afternoon. I called somebody. I was like, if y'all can go to the courthouse, this person can marry y'all and we can close by Friday. Wow. <laughs> wow. So just, just, just being a resource, you know, to be able to help people. Um, you know, it's just so um, I don't take that for granted. Um, and, and, and I and I hold it with care. So, you know, when, when I when people cross my paths or I, I meet people or I pour into their lives, I always want to leave an impression. But I also want people to 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 continue to trust me and, and know that they can reach out to me when they need stuff or, you know, what have you. So, um, you know, my family jokes about me. I, we can't go anywhere without me seeing people um, that I know. <laughs> hey, you're just like a politician shaking hands and kissing babies. I love it. You know, Robin, being a transplant, even though I call myself a Georgia peach, you're originally here. So you saw that boom back in 2000 when the entire city was just exploding with housing developments and all kinds of things just coming up, especially on the north side of town. So with that, um, pretty much most people in Atlanta today, they're as a backup, as a side hustle or whatever. Oh, I have, they have their real estate license. What advice would you give to someone who's an up and coming real estate agent and wants to hopefully hit those six figures? But do you feel the market is saturated? What are your thoughts? What advice would you give to someone who literally just passed the, their uh, exam and got their license? Um, I would, my, my number one advice that I would give them is don't focus on the money, focus on the value. Everybody is a real estate agent because that, that there's no secret. If you do well in real estate, you can make a ton of money. But you need to um, 
really focus on learning your craft, knowing the market, knowing the business. Mm. Real estate agents and realtors, we advise people. We don't tell them, but we advise people. Mm. If I'm advising you to do something, that means you trust me. So that means I need to trust you to have your ear to the market. Be connected. Know people that can assist with the loan. Know people that can assist with credit repair. Somebody needs that. Know people who can assist um, if your your parents died and now you inherit a home that you don't know what to do with and give you the best options. Help people that can assist with, um, I'm about to lose my house and we're in a seller's market mm. and I shouldn't lose my house in a seller's market because you know why? There's some equity in your home. And yeah, you may not get what you want for it, but you'll walk away with a check versus you walking away with a blemish on your credit report. You know, so you you the main thing that I would give to them is learn how you will add value to people and the money will follow. If you're focused on, oh, I want to make this, I want to make that, I want to, I'm not saying you can't have financial goals, but if money is what's driving you in the real estate, you're gonna be like all the other 4,000 agents, you know, there's a stat that the average real estate agent sells four homes a year. Wow. Everybody who got a license is not selling real estate. So what are you going to do to differentiate yourself from all those other thousands of agents who just got a license? If you want to do this, you got to, you, you have to take your craft seriously. You have to be dialed in. You have to have a good circle, a good company, a good brokerage. All those things matter because if not, you're just going to be a part of that agents, that part of that group of agents who don't close any houses. You see, Robin, you see, you're like, you're the agent who I'm walking in Kroger or Publix and I just want bread and I go down that bread aisle and there's a whole three, five different shelves of bread. But I know right. that I'm going to get this brand because it has this many sugars and this many carbs and this and that's Robin. You will find her on that shelf with all those different agents. But you're there. And for that exact reason is that you do know your craft and you are very resourceful. So uh, kudos to you. That was very insightful. I appreciate that no problem. now robin how can people find you what area are you in how does this work do we network yeah. talk to us about how people can contact you awesome well the best way to contact me is you can go to my website which is sold by robin elicia.com that's r-o-b-y-n-e-l-i-c-i-a and um, as far as social media, I'm very, very active on Instagram. I do use Facebook a lot, but Facebook is like more of a network for me. So like most of the people I know on Facebook or accept on Facebook, um, those are people that I've known for years and things like that. But um, I'm very active on Instagram. So if you shoot me a DM on Instagram, um, I definitely will respond to you. We can sit down and um, you may not be ready to buy a house today um, or you may have an issue with a house that you already own or you just want to see what your house is on, you know, work. Um, all those things can be found on my website. I love to talk to people. I love to give people uh, resources because um, I may not be able to help you right then, but you never know. So um, yes, so sold by RobinAlicia.com. And on Instagram, sold by Robin Alicia. And that's R-O-B-Y-N-E-L-I-C-I-A. Robin, before we uh, we depart here, I have to ask, because I did mention future me. And in case, we'll put that in the, the information uh, mm -hmm. with this episode so people can go check that out as well. And we will have Robin's information available. But Robin, five years from now, give us one thing that's on your list that you want to manifest. Oh, I would like to manifest being a top producer. And when I say top producer, I want to be a top producing team. Mm. And I want to manifest helping at as many ages as I can be true real estate business owners, not just agents. I want to help other agents thrive in the real estate industry. So five years from now, you can see me somewhere teaching, helping other people thrive in this business. That was fantastic. Robin, thank you. What a true delight. I really appreciated your time and this episode. So thank you so much. No problem. Thanks for having me, Maggie. Absolutely. Bye. Bye-bye. You're listening to Empress Conversations Podcast with your host, Maggie Peary.
Join us next time on the next episode of Empress Conversations with Maggie. To learn more about guests or for more information on working with Maggie, go to www.empressconversationswithmaggie slash get hyphen started.